peoples we're back it's time for the demo you know what it is you know what it is yes it's uh it's been a good couple of weeks missing from doing the demo i think three total yeah it's been like three total but yes i've been out and in japan and having a good old time and doing all the myriad things but it's time to get back after it so as you know uh, this is the demo. So what we do here is we go through Ecamm Live and show you how to use it and do all of the cool things that Ecamm does. Let me turn off the speakers. And if you run into a situation where you have a question, we're going to want you to drop a Q colon in front of your question. You'll see why as we progress through the demo. If you're brand new here, first time watching the demo, I know a lot of people got Ecamm over the holidays. So we might get some new Kim folks around here. If you're brand new, let us know. So that way we can uh, address your questions more directly. Most of these other people have seen the demo a minimum of 100 times. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm dead serious about that. So, um, yeah, if you run into any questions, drop those in there, and then we will get started, like, in a heartbeat as soon as I do one of these here moves right here. Boom. I just closed the window that I wanted to keep open. All right, don't you love when you do that? This is what your questions look like. Otherwise, it's a comment. And, yes, please do not, like, make comments posed as questions. That's just evil. All right. Keller, good to see you here. Looks like you might be one of the new folks, um, but everybody else, I, I know these kin folks. Parker is always first in the building. What's up, Parker? Good to see you, family. Happy New Year, brother. All right, let's get let's get this twisted. Let's get it twisted. All right, what I'm going to do here, Ecamm has a cool feature that is known as live demo mode. And what that allows me to do is show you what I see. Do you see what I see? Yes, that's an old, uh, old song. Yo. What's up, Johnny? Good to see you here. Appreciate you. All right, so here we go. <laughs> hey, what's up, D? Good to see you here. D Wayne, man. I was I'm sitting over here thinking I need to make a trip back home to the New York real quick. <laughs> Paul, I know you've seen it more than 101 times. You've moderated it more than 100 times, so zip your face. All right, so this is my basic layout. Your layout going to look different. I'm a little weirdo. I like things like exactly how I like them things in place. Like this fact that the sound effects window is slightly off kilter will just chat my nads a little bit. 
So I like to come in here, line things up, how I line it up. And they do get out of whack because I'm always in here tweaking. Uh, you don't need to see that right there. So we normally set it up like this. You set it up how you set it up so it matches. I will tell you one thing, though. There are a lot of people that attempt to run Ecamm off of one monitor. And I will uh, give you the official prognosis. You're crazy. <laughs> It's really, it's really hard to do. Uh, it's much better if you have an additional monitor. So even if you don't think you have the space for, say, a full desktop monitor, you might want to go to the Buy More or somebody like that and get yourself a cool little portable, right? You could pick up a 15-inch portable for like 150 bucks, and it just uses a USB-C cable, and it will make your life easier. Trying to do this off of one monitor is pretty pretty difficult anyway what's up let's get after it hey new guys from poland what's up robert good to see you here okay uh what we're going to talk about first is the primary premise of any live streaming setup is you're going to want to separate your things between scenes and overlays so Dina, who just popped into the chat with her new dog. Hello, Dina. Hello, Dale. Did you do Dale or did you do Dale? See, if the dog was Puerto Rican, it would be Dale. Dale! <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> off kilter. <laughs> Sorry, Gretchen. So the, the way Dina explains it, which is probably one of the better analogies I like, is you think of your live stream as your house, right? And your scenes would be the individual rooms. And the overlays would be the furnishings in each particular room. So when you are in, say, like this would be my, uh, it's called the Genkan. That's in, in Japan when you first walk in the house, the vestibule, you take off your shoes. That's called the Genkan, right? So in the Genkan, I got a basic background and a single camera, right? So let's, let's show you what I mean by that. So here, I'm going to create a brand new scene. Now... When you start a new scene, yours are going to come out black like this. I happen to have a background. And all it is is a simple graphic to which I pulled from the internet someplace, right? So if I wanted to, I could bring this in as a graphic. And you'll see when I come over here, they're showing the current scene. They're showing background. If I turn it loose and showing background it now becomes the background instead of what I had as the background. So you could pick up any myriad sort of graphics and drop them in and allow them to be your background, right? So whatever floats your boat and helps you hide the remote, um, yeah, that's, that's what your background could be. Here, you know what? It's a brand new year. Let's get some paper, all right? You know what I mean? So if I'm doing a financial show, I might do something like this, right? And then what I'd want to do is pop on the camera. So in the overlay section, right here at the bottom, let me show you what we're working with. We got a new image overlay. That's the first icon. This is a new animated overlay. This is a new screen share overlay. This is a new text overlay. This is a new countdown overlay. This is a new widget. We'll get into that. This is a new camera overlay and then folders to stuff things in nicely to make it cute. Right, so if we pit back out of here for a quick secchi, and then I press on this new camera, boom, now you get a camera, right? So this is cool, but it doesn't really fit my layout. Let's go to Squircle. Squircle looks a little better. So I can sit myself down here in the bottom, and today we're gonna to work on our financial news, right? You know what I'm saying? So that would be sort of how we set ourselves up. I'm gonna go ahead and put back on my regular one because it's giving me a headache. <laughs> there we go. So this is simply how you set it up in, in case you missed it. Yes. Uh, house equals scenes and rooms. Profile is a house. Ooh, there you go. I missed one. See, Dina, this is why we got you up here. Your profile is your house. And I'll explain profiles in a second. Right up here in the top, you have profiles. My default show, this is one I do for IG Live, one for my personal uh, Let's Get Live stream, and then one for my LinkedIn. And then another profile down here, it says new profile because I haven't renamed it, but that's my Amazon profile. So that way, each one of these is smart enough to remember the settings for each individual joint. So for instance, IG Live, 
they are they lame. They only want you to kick a little 1080, right? But for my LGL stream, yo, I'm rocking that 4K life, right? And then for LinkedIn, they only want 720. So like I can set these up and it knows the right logins and passwords and like all the individual settings for each, you know, showgram. So yeah, your profile would be your house. Your scenes would be the rooms. These are all my rooms. Hey, get away. All my rooms kicking it down here on the side. And then overlays would be the furnishings. So let's start with this here camera, right? Now, let's say I'm going to embiggen this a little bit. I'm going to embiggen it to round by yo big. All right. Now, in this particular scene, I want to be able to show off, I don't know, a graphic. So this would be that image overlay, this first icon down here. Now, I'm going to show you. There's two ways to do this, right? There. Let's get live, Jeff Bull. That's my personal brand. I get busy, right? It's just my personal brand. You can ignore it for today. Or you can follow me. <laughs> anyway, uh, this, uh, <laughs> Jeff, why you make me laugh? Now, now I'm going to be giggling all day. And uh, nice beard, by the way. <laughs> um, this image button's down here on the bottom, right? You can press these, and then it does the things where it think. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. This is a Mac OS thing, has been a Mac OS thing since System 7. When you press a dialog box like such, and you wait for this window to pop up, if yours takes a little bit longer, it's not the program that you're using. It's not Ecamm, it's not Photoshop, it's not, you know, Pages, Keynote, whatever. That's Mac OS pooling the myriad amount of drives you have connected. So if you're one of these old school people who would put their computer on a thing and then plug in like seven, eight drives, every time you go to do an open dialogue or a save dialogue, it takes a minute, especially if you haven't, activated those drives recently. Now when I press it, it pops up pretty quick because it's already pulled all of my drives. And you can see down here, I got one, two, three, four, four connected, one network. And so yeah, um, it's just, so that's why I don't use this, all right? So yeah, I could press that, I could come here, I could select on a, a image and then I could press open and then it'll work, right? Um, but I don't do that. We are Mac people. We are Mac people through and through. So, people in the chat, can you tell these kid folks what is the optimum word to how to get something into your show? <laughs> the chat people know because I, I I complain about this all the time. Once you bring an image in, you can you can drag and drop it. You can embiggen it, unembiggen. Notice that when you embiggen something, that it can get pixelated. So don't embiggen too much. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to throw this in here and today we were going to talk about, you know, Jeff Perhalter and, uh, Claudio Reyna, <laughs> then yeah, I would, that would be the show. If I was out here talking about USA football troubles, right? All right. So round, not oblong. All right. So now I'm going to take this. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to reach over here and I want to show you guys how we can do an animated overlay. So on my computer, I have. Uh, what they would call a folder that I created called Ecamm Assets. Now, I have to give you a fantastic warning. Warning. If, <laughs> if you please remember, I've done it myself. I've made a fool out of myself a couple, three times. When I was on the vacay, uh, my, my homegirl, my boss, my, my partner in crime on the podcast, Katie did the same thing. I believe even Daniel did it in his demo. Do not put your assets on a iCloud or Dropbox or some other drive where they will get sent to the cloud when you need them. They won't always load properly. So I have a folder called Ecamm Assets and it sits on a standard issue All-American SSD on basically taped to the back of my monitor. The reason why you want to do that, if you put it in a place that lives in the cloud, you'll go to click it one day or you'll go to start your show and it'll be like, yo, that asset is missing. <laughs> so by all means, please don't do that. Okay, so let me show you the next part of this joint here is what's known as an animated overlay. I'll give you one I got right here is bam, there's an animated overlay, right? I have it on a hot key. When I press A, it pops up. What's up? So that's just a, a, a GIF file, right? So it's, uh, yeah, that's it. It's animated GIF. And it's a present. It's not peanut butter. Just saying. Just saying. 
Okay, now here's the other thing. I have a other things that you can put as an animation. Uh, I want to show you one of these first. So if I were to drop in this file, I'm just going to let this loose. It's going to say, hey, Mr. Doc, do you want to add an animated overlay? Do you want to add this file as an animated overlay? Animated overlays do not include audio. Add animated overlay or play full screen with audio. All right, so if I back out and say add animated overlay, I get this cool little like, share, subscribe button that pops up. And but you notice y'all can't hear Nathan, right? Here's why. In order to get transparency on these type of graphics that you might create for yourself, someone's going to ask. So I'll just explain it to you. I created that in Final Cut Pro. Super simple. You can create it in Canva, Adobe Express. You can get them off the internet, whatever. But if you create it like such and you drop it in as an animated overlay, you will not hear any noise. So if I drop this in here, instead of dropping it in the middle this time, I am purposefully going to drop it in showing current scenes, say add as an animated overlay. Again, it pops up. Everything is everything, except you can't hear no sound. And yes, BICEP is a real word, all right? Y'all used to be 5'2". <laughs> okay, now, if you convert the file using something known as shutter encoder, Paul will get the description for you. I will drop the link in the description. And I already have a tutorial of it on my personal channel. I don't think I have one on the Ecamm channel. I may or may not. I don't remember. I have tons of videos. Um, but I've done on how to encode it with Shutter Encoder. Shutter Encoder will allow you to generate what's known as a WebM format. Don't get technical. Kind of doesn't matter. It's just the name. It's Google's version of the HEVC format. And what that does is that unlike Apple ProRes 4444 is what you have what you have to do in order to get a transparent background, it adds the ability to do sound. And the reason why they did that, this is the format that Google uses to compress images for YouTube or videos for YouTube. So if you notice, when I drop this first guy over, it says LCSMOV, right? It's a standard MOV file. Boom, I hit animated overlay, no sound, all right? So let's undo that. Now, when I grab this one, it says lcs.webm, right there, W-E-B-M, stands for web movie. When I turn this bad boy loose, noise. <laughs> so you get noise, right? So if you, ever, if you need to have your little pop-ups, have a little flavor, a little sauce, if you want them to have that sauce, you need to add, save them as WebM, right? So I'll show you, this is gonna be really loud, hold your ears. That's my intro. Everybody who's been to my show have seen that about 350 times. But yeah, same thing. If you save it as a WebM, couple things. A, you get the sound. You can have that transparency. And the files are small. Google made this so that when you have files on YouTube servers, they don't take up as much space. The files are tiny, 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 tiny. Uh, Sarita said, we'd love to know how to talk over and play another live stream and live TV show. Well, playing live TV shows is illegal in this country and uh, easy. Just play the video. I'll show you, but um, your internet connection got to be pretty gangster if you wish to do this. But yes, um, it is very possible. Uh, let me show you one more thing real quick. I thought I seen J Red slide in the building. Happy New Year, Brother Spinks. Good to see you here. Um, yeah, so the other thing that you could do with that, for instance, a lot of times, similar to what Sarita said, you want to play another movie film, a subsequent movie film. So if I were to drop in this subsequent movie film of the Notorious IAG. <laughs> Ian Nancy Gray here. here. I have I been using the Ecamm line since it came, came out. out. Be quiet, Ian. The reason why you know that's a full takeover, the icon here at the top has switched into a movie film. That's not what we're looking for, right? Oh, dang. That head got large. If I were to grab this subsequent movie film and drop it and show in current scene, just so you can see, I'm literally physically dropping this in show in current scene. 
then I get that same question mark. Do I want to add this as an animated overlay? Why, yes, I do. Because I want to be able to talk spicy about Ian. Maybe I'm showing field hockey clips. Maybe I'm like, you know, Sarita, I'm talking about uh, a TV show. You know, I want to talk about, um, uh, what is it? True Blood, which I used to call Fangs and Boobies. That's the name of True Blood because that's all it is, is Fangs and Boobies. If I'm doing a, a fan takedown of True Blood or the walking dead or something. I want to be able to have that there and talk, talk about it. But you know, I might want to hear it. Right. So as you can see right now, Ian talking by himself, right? So check this out. It's 86 that if I convert it to a WebM like such, I can drop Ian, yeah, yeah, that's a great right here. And I have been using Ecamm live since it I can hear came out just about is I -A -G. He's talking and then I can stop it. And really, what do you think about that? Ian? My first, My first Mac. Mac. I, I love, love the product. product. I've, been I've been talking, talking about, about it. it. I love the product too. And you know why? Because I work there. They pay They pay my mortgage. <laughs> so yeah, that's, if you convert it to a WebM, it'll work. Not nowadays, when you download, a, a, when you acquire a video from the red site with the play button, who name shall not be said, because they don't like when you tell people this, it will come down as a WebM in most cases if the person has uploaded a higher quality video like 1440p or uh, 4K, they have already been squished. Older videos will still come out as moves or MP4s or, M4As or M4Vs, but most of the new stuff, when you go to download a video from the site that you're watching right now, um, yeah, and Downey pull tube, yes. I, I contrary to what uh, Sarita said, whose question I'll answer right now. I don't like playing live videos in the middle of a live video. Um, and it's a very simple reason. Live streaming is the hardest thing you're gonna ask your computer to do unless you are a protein synthesis person. Most, nobody in the chat that I know of, I know Paul Duncan, definitely not. If you're not a, a protein synthesizer, Yo, the hardest thing you fixing to do with your computer is live stream. So making it play another video live from the internet at the same time you're live on the internet is asking a lot. And unless you got a Mac Studio or you know an M1 uh, Mac Mini like 16 gig or whatever, you might run into some issues, right? Especially if your internet is uh, by spectrum <laughs> or or. Cox or Xfinity or any other the American ripoff artists. Okay, so all you gotta do, Sarita, if you if you're still crazy, because I know, um, like the person that lives with me, don't listen to a damn thing I say. Uh, you just press screen share. Simple as that. Come over to here and um, let's do something where I can't get in too much trouble. Because when a content strike comes in, I know this person will let it go. I should actually learn how to type. All right, let's do this. So this would be a video and not a live live because again, I know this person is not going to content strike me. If they do, I know where they live. <laughs> so I'm not going to play a live live because you know, I don't want to content strike, which is what you will get, which is why you shouldn't be doing that anyway. But again, people are hard headed and don't listen to me. So there's that. All right. So all I did was do a screen share, select the Chrome window, embiggen it to whatever size I want to embiggen it to, right? And then press play. If you, if you uh, want, uh, to, want save to save some money, some money on Ecamm, Ecamm which I'm using to live stream, I mean, fantastic it's, program. It's just a uh, uh, my affiliate, affiliate link is down, down in the down description. description. It's just, it's just a, uh, it's just a screen share. Like it, there's nothing complicated about it. Now, I don't particularly like the layout what's working right now. So what I will do is grab the edge, hold the option key, and tuck that in a little piece, right? Maybe I'll actually I'll tuck it all the way in. Um, it's a little hard to see because Jared's on a black background. Let's put Jared and and uh, Tom Thumb over here. So then I could tuck it all the way in to where, you know, we're even almost rid of the, who's this camera junkie dude popping up in the stream, right? So I, all I'm doing is holding the option key to tuck that in, and then I can embiggen it. And then the best part is stopping the video on Jared looking at Tom like, what the hell are you talking about, Buck? <laughs> so again, yeah, super simple. And Panic. 
there have there been have times, times where I need at to this sit point down to in time, right as I'm about to hear. Like it's really simple. If I were to come down here and la 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 la, there is no live. There it is. If I was to come down here and press live, and then I don't want to talk to none of these people. Uh, nope, don't want to do that. Nope, don't want to do that. Well, I'll just like I'll just put this on for a split second. Yes, yeah, so you see what I'm saying? So yes, you could play a live video live. It's silly. But if you want to, you can. It's just a screen share. It doesn't, it's nothing special. Okay, so we covered that. Uh, J Rad says, when using video ISOs in the beta version, it recorded my other video without color correction, but I applied. I think it does that because it's native, right? Um, as far as I know, you're getting a naked raw recording, so it doesn't keep the LUTs. I don't think there is a pre-fader level, post-fader level adjustment to that, but let's investigate. Ba 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 ba. Nope. Interview. Nope. Recording. Yeah, there's no checkbox in order. Oh, right there. Doink. Come on, J Rad. Look, it's right there, homie. Apply camera effects to recorded video sources. There you go. So try check that box and try it again. Hit me up later today if you want to test. But not until after this demo. Then we go to affiliate training. And after affiliate training, we have Manchester United game. So hit me up about 12. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what kind of files can you use as a as NA overlays? Uh, don't know what NA is, but I'll give you the basics, right? So you could throw in a PDF, right? I love PDFs. Everybody likes to do their keynote presentations as keynote presentations, and that's silly because all your little animations and all of that, while cute, is just a you're adding resources that you don't necessarily need. You're already live. That should be your engagement. So adding those other resources is silly. But if you add a PDF, you just hit the arrow keys to slide through that bad boy. So I like to use a PDF as my one of my particular joints. You could throw in a PNG right there for anybody who's coming to the affiliate training directly after this. There's the thumbnail. -y. So you could drop a PNG as an overlay. Uh, of course, you can do a JPEG. Um, one of my favorite graphics I created last year is don't beat his horse. You don't want to be number three because you're just smelling butt. Um, you can drop in WebMs as I, sh as I showed you. You can drop in the movie file. So the movie file works, right? So that works as an overlay. Um, yeah, I mean, you could drop in the Kino file, JPEGs, of course. Um, yeah, pretty much anything. We support a whole bunch of file types. But again, if you want them to be transparent, I would say save them as an Alpha ProRes 4444 or save them as a WebM. Now, unless you use an After Effects, you can't go straight to WebM. If you use Final Cut or Motion, it's going to force you to save it as an Alpha ProRes 4444 or just a regular movie file and then throw it at Shutter Encoder, in which case Shutter Encoder will keep the will generate the transparency for the Alpha channel. And yeah, it's more complicated than the demo, so that's why I made a video about it. But that should help you. Boom, boom, boom. What's up, Laura? How are you doing? Long time no see. <laughs> Synthesize protein every day. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Your, your, your captioning has some interesting translation. Yes. Um, Jeff, I know you're brand new. Please remember to throw the cue because today's not busy, but if it's busy, I would miss your question. Uh, do you find it preferable to make guest video uh, only on one screen when they're speaking? Or, you know, I do both. I do both. That's a very good question. Okay, so here's how I run this. Let's, let's finish this up real quick. So let me put this here, and I'm going to drop this in the middle, a round ball like this, hold the option key, drag it again, right? So... That's easy. If you're the type of person who's like, I don't know what you just did. I forget option key. Just click camera A right here on the bottom. Lot, 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 camera A. Click it, press copy, command C, or just be really slow. Come up here and press copy. 
and then really slow, come up here and press paste or command V, and then it just pasted in an additional copy. If I hit pa command V again, command V again, command V again, command V, you can make all the copies you want, right? So let's undo that, except for one. There we go. So now I have an additional copy. All right, so let me uh, line these bad boys up. You'll notice the blue, I'm pointing into the screen like you can see my finger. <laughs> Notice the blue line that that gives you some alignment help. It's super dope. One of my favorite features. It's the easiest feature in the whole ecam. One of my favorites because I'm really anal about lining stuff up. Okay, so let me click on this bad boy. Press over here. Switch this bad boy to guess one. Bam. So there's going to be guess one. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> nah, you're good, Jeff. You're brand new. You get you're off the hook. If, if when the old people do it, they get yelled at. But you're good. <laughs> All right, so. Let's come over here and press on the old doohickey right here. That is me. All right, so show me some cool stuff here. I don't want both of them to be screaming, so I can select this bad boy and do lights. I really don't want it to be in all caps. I'm gonna go to open sans, leave it just like that. And then actually, I'm gonna do this one on Montserrat. Nope, Avenue next. I'm gonna hit the bold, and then I'm gonna go like that and hit medium. All right, cool. So there's my my little setup. Now, if I just turn this loose right here, I got this cool little box. It's way too big, kind of disgusting. Yeah, I feel you. But let's pretty fly this up a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, shrink it to about the size I know I'm gonna shrink it to. All right, that looked good. Actually, a little bit bigger. Now, on the edge here, there's these little lines. Those are finger grips, right? That's where you can grab it with the mouse and then pull that sucker along. Except for it's being mean right now. Let me throw the background. It makes it easier. So I'll put the background. Bam. Now that throws it long, right? So what I like to do is hit, like, the width of the box, you know, a little bit. Again, your design stuff is up to you. This is just how I work, right? So I'm gonna hit it like that just a little bit, and then I'm gonna unembiggen it by about 25%, right? So there is how I call my box, right? Now, I wanna have another person. Um, to my show, it's called the guest, see? You know, the brain cell is not working. Again, hold the option key and drag. You could also use the copy and paste method, whatever, man, I'm about, I'm about drag and drop. We're Mac people, what I'm saying. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add J-Rad over here. Stupid title. That is so not the right answer. It's a cinematographer, but, you know, not going to try to spell today. All right, so... That's what Jeff says about setting up your show. So I got a spot for me, and I got a spot for Jared. Now watch this, Jeff. This is what I do. Trust me, it will make your life easier because I like things to line up, right? Let's say I'm going to have another scene where I want to add an additional guest. So first thing, let me do this. I, name your scenes, people. It will really get old. All right? So I'm going to, down here on the bottom, there's a little thingy thing to hit the duplicate, right? Duplicate currency. Let me embiggen that for those who can't see. Glenda. <laughs> so let me hit that. Bam. So here's a duplicate. Now I'm on the duplicate. What I'm going to do here is add a different guest. So I'm going to come over here, drop this down to guest two, and then I'm going to double click on this bad boy. And the only reason why I'm doing them separate is so that I don't lose... I don't lose the formatting. You could just retype the whole thing if you don't have a mixed format like I do. Um, all right, so bam, click that. So now I got my other one. I'm gonna come over here, boom, 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 and then rename this. All right, bam. Now, without doing anything i have the same basic layout but i haven't ruined the alignment at all right so let's duplicate this one more again and then this one i'm gonna just eliminate me 
because there might be a situation where there's a point counterpoint and they talking to each other, right? So watch this trick here. Oi, don't delete that doc. I'm going to take this one, switch it to guess one, and then not to mess anything up, I'm going to grab this particular lower third I already created and I'm going to just press copy and then I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to press paste. Hey, where'd you go? I guess I missed it. I should copy it with my right fingers. Oh, I know what I did. I pressed copy again. Dang, doc, you silly. Anyway, make sure you click that, copy it, paste it, or you can actually just drag it over. That also works because, again, we're Mac people, right? So now I'm going to pick this one up, put this one here, and cover the other one, and then eliminate myself. So now I can have a scene where there's the me and uh, Jared, then there would be me and Jeff, and then there's Jared and Jeff. Now, one last thing you could do, which I think is also kind of swanky, is I'll go ahead and duplicate this one more time, and I'm going to eliminate Jared. Hey, I said eliminate, and then eliminate. And then in this particular case, I would click on the pencil, and sorry, I did it wrong. Click on the pencil, go to widescreen, and then I will place Jeff about right chin, get a little wider. That looks gravy. Come on, center. And then, bam, find the center. So, yes, so to Jeff's point, dang it, where's my center? There it is. To Jeff's point, I like to come in here. I'll start out like this, and then I'll go to our double shot, and then I'll bring in my next guest, have these two argue about something, and then Jeff getting spicy. He handling his business. I'll let him be full screen. And then to move back and forth, you can literally just use the command keys in a, in a, in a different number, and that's going to allow you to slide back or throw them up on the Right? Well, they mean to go back that far. Right? So your command keys correspond with the list command one through nine, or put them on the stream deck, or you can use your arrow keys, command and arrow key to change between the scenes. So to Jeff's point, that's how I do it. Yes. Mm. Uh, can I use eBet, Ecamm Beta and loop back from a live streams with private all day, every day, yesterday, three times on Sundays and backwards? You the the Ecamm loop back combination doesn't care where you're streaming to or how you're streaming or whatever you're streaming to. So you can do it to IG, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Amazon Live, whatever. So yes, that can work. Boom. <laughs> There you go. Uh, uh, continue. I try to play an audio file from a teachable file, and it would not play back to my audience. It just blanked out. I was able to play the YouTube clip, but not teachable. Um, teachable is just a standard issue video file for as far as I know. But again, uh, what I'm about to teach you is bad. You kind of sort of always want to download the files whenever possible because you're already streaming and so you're making your um you're making your computer work its face off unnecessarily and yeah hold on let me do this real quick if we don't we don't let's let me fix this english the program is not smart enough to know where the file comes from if that makes any sense to you right so Ecamm doesn't know teachable versus not teachable. Ecamm doesn't know Vimeo versus, it just, it just plays a video. If the file is in the standard video formats, MPEG, MP4, uh, whatever, they will just play. And, and actually on this particular example, just another sample, um, it is legit. Let me see where we do it here. On this sample, it's actually a YouTube video, so that's not helpful. In this first and this part, part where we're going to learn, learn all so, things click up. I just want to... Wanna... So, yeah, like, it doesn't know. It, it really doesn't know. Um, Especially audio file, even more so, it straight up wouldn't know. So if I come back out of here and pick a different one, that's... Jessica just used a uh, YouTube video. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble with Chris for this bad boy. <laughs> let's see if there's any videos in here. Uh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. 
These are PDFs. Those are all PDFs. So there might not be no videos in there. Yeah, no videos in this one. But yeah, it's just a website. So it doesn't, the, the computer doesn't know. And you don't need loopback to do this either. You can just play any file from anywhere. It's completely irrelevant. Uh, there we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. The Anyway, if you're playing something from a browser, it's just a browser. So it, it has to be something wrong with the video clip you're playing. But um, yeah, we don't know. Uh, can I create a standard shot and save for a comment? Yes. Um, as you notice, mine basically stay the same. It does auto adjust based off of this. You know what I mean? But yeah, it doesn't stay 100%. If I go to a big one like this, right, it's close, but it's not exactly the same. You know what I mean? Okay, so let me do this real quick. Nobody see me do this right quick. Nobody watched. <laughs> okay. I'm using Ecamm to switch between live in-person cameras coming to remote, remote guests and hybrid. Uh, how do you get Ecamm's output to the Blackmagic Ultra Studio? Um, take your Blackmagic Ultra Studio and plug it to your Mac, your Mac will see it as a monitor and then just come up here in the top, go to output and I got the deck link output or you can do NDI to your black manager audio studio or you just do video monitor. Your BM US will show up right here as one of the monitors, that's it. So you just go to output, video monitor and it would be whatever monitor you have selected. Um, Jessica, you know, big country. Uh, that will be extremely particular to you. However, there shouldn't be any issue at all because all Stream Deck does is just say, run a scene and then click right here, select the item, and there's all of the scenes. So... If I need to run a scene, I just hit that, and now it's on the Stream Deck, right? So if I press my Stream Deck, it just goes to that scene. Wow, that's old. That's it. So, I mean, there should be... If your scene is not showing up in here, it's buried somewhere, or just make a copy of the scene. Here, let me show you. Let's go. Let's just say... All of these scenes right here, I no longer need them. Pick them bad boy up, drag them out to the desktop. There they are. Of course, my desktop, let me clean this up. There. Not a, oh, that's nasty. I cannot stand things on my desktop. It really hurts my face. Um, but yeah, that's all you got to do to export the scene. And then after you export it, and then so highlight all of them bad boys again. And delete it. Okay, so in which case, delete, every, copy all your scenes to the desktop somewhere, delete all of them except the one you're trying to do, and then see if it works, right? So I'm going to come in real quick and do myself another favor. I'm going to grab all of these two. I'm going to put them in a different spot. Hey, again, I'm just dragging them and dropping them here so I know where they're at. All right, I'm going to delete everything. So now I got my intro in this scene. I don't need this auto folder. I'll delete that too. All right, so now if it don't work now, then there, you just need to uninstall and reinstall the Stream Deck plugin. But in theory, if I click here and click on select the item, I got three choices <laughs> or two choices actually. So I'll just select that one. You know what I mean? And then once once you got it working and you found it, you're probably just missing what you titled it because it doesn't know how to not find it. It's just not computers ain't that smart. I don't think I don't think people understand that. It is not smart enough to purposely F you. Let's put it that way. It doesn't know how. It has no clue whatsoever. Anyway, once you're done and you want to put back the scenes that you just messed with, all you gotta do is just double click them and then they will magically appear 
back into the showgram to where you are. So, uh, Ekem Live's already running. I got that. I don't want to do that. I just want to drag these bad boys right back to where I got them from. And then they're all back. So, drag and drop. Drag and drop. It's a Mac. It's dope. Yes, you can control each remote guest audio. When you have interview person here, there's a slider on each individual person up and down this whole thing. There's a slider for every people. And I'm going to show you guys something because people don't know how amazing Ecamm Life really is. Let me see if I can find this image. It is a... Uh, it's pretty bananas to me. Uh, yo, check this out. This is Ecamm Live Beta, 10 guests in full conflagration. 10 guests plus the host. If you go into the Ecamm Beta group on Facebook, you can actually find this stream. And anybody that says to me, I don't, I, I, every time I have a guest, I can't get it to work. I'm going to just laugh at you because, like, look, I did it with 11 people total. It works. You, if you, Audio, the program does not know how to generate echo. There's no button. There's no software. There's no magic. It doesn't know how to do that. That's in your audio device, in your audio chain. There's no command in Ecamm that says make an echo. So we don't know how to do that. If it's doing it, it's coming from somewhere else. You need to follow the line, like take your finger, and I, I draw my audio traces with my finger, and then it helps me figure out where. Nine times out of 10, there's another browser window open, doubling up. The other thing, when someone in your audience says there's an echo, like Sarita, I just ignore her because she's the only one person to say it. If five people say it, then there's an echo. But she said it, I ignored it, nobody else has said it, so there's not an echo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, boom. Can we add different sound effects to Ecamm? Why, yeah, you can. DJ Doc Rock. DJ Doc Rock. Simple as pie. Uh, let's pick one. I know what you're doing. You're counting down these. Let me see. Uh, what did I do? I had Epidemic Sound open like a second ago. Oh, there it is. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let us put some in it. So let me grab this and double that and then say browser. Ah, you. I hate when it moves my cursor. All right. So then we hit that, get rid of that, take this and whoosh, throw it up in the corner like such. I'm going to hit a new screen share overlay. I'm going to go like that. Go like that. And then I'm going to select Chrome A. Googly Chrome. Boom. Gangster, yeah. gangster. Somebody in Discord mm -hmm. said something. Oops. <laughs> Gretchen and K Walk is in Discord causing this disruption in my ear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So listen, I'm up in here. Yes, I got a playlist. We're just going to grab a sound effect for the temporarily get out. responsibilities. Stop shaking Stop your that. head. <laughs> and then I hit the bell, go to sound effects. I see a bell. That's dumb. There you go. Perfect bicycle bell. Close this. I downloaded the app seven years ago. I'm going to download it as a wave. It doesn't matter. Wave, MP3, whatever. That's your world. And then it's a Mac. Pick it up. Grab what? it, Upside drop it. Simple as pie. That's it. Drag and drop. Everything in this world is drag and drop. Send me the teachable file that you're having a hard time playing, and I'll tell you what it is. Because and really, it do, we do not know how to not play files. I just can't explain that enough. Uh, we support every audio format practically known to mankind. So unless they found a way to encode it, which I don't think Teachable is that smart, it, that's not it. Uh, how many remote guests can we have with the current version? Four. 
but just download the beta. Just go to ecamcom slash beta and you can do 10. Trust you me. Um, yeah, if you do video playback, that's going to do that because of the way I have it. That's why I say I don't play videos like that. <laughs> anyway, this is why you don't play videos like that. But if you want to play a video like that, you have to turn off your system audio so that your system audio doesn't play into your stream. So in other words, I use a Rodecaster Pro, and that's how I set it up. So let me do this again because y'all think I'm crazy, and I'm not. It's super easy to do. Uh, where you go? Here it is a good one, but this dork. All right, so all I gotta do is now you won't hear any echo. There's no such thing as echo, by the way. It's just doubled audio. All right. Well, no, it didn't work. Mistakes. And they go, uh-huh. And everybody goes, where's Sony? They're late. What are they doing? And Sony's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then right after so everybody, you, with everybody blows So what you, what you need to notice is if over here, I have this set up and my system comes through the Rodecaster Pro. So if I run it through the Rodecaster Pro. Cap. Then Sony comes in and goes, I'm the hero. I the Rodecaster Pro thing is moving, right? If I set it up so that it also comes out of system audio, right? And then bring my, my levels back up. Solved all of the problems that you don't like. Of course, now it's making a liar out of me. Buy me a coffee. Um, can you have member benefits or is it strictly just supporting the creator? Oh, you can have member benefits for sure. Okay. My, cool. my, of course, now it's not doing it. But if you have it coming out of system audio as well as your Rodecaster Pro, you are going to get that weird problem because it's playing twice so if you look at i can't even make it happen now which is funny but if you look at your sound levels which is telling you to answer like it's legit this is giving you the answer if you see this moving and this moving at the same time that means that the sound is coming through your system audio and your interface therefore you're getting a double they won't come in at the same speed and therefore you're getting a double audio aka everybody in the community calls echo but for the last time, an echo sounds like this. Echo, 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 echo. A double, double sound sound sounds like, like this, 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 this. Two different things, right? So if you're doubling up the sound, that's where it's coming from, right? So all you got to do is look at, your, look at your sound level and see what it's doing. It will tell you every time. Tell them again, Anthony. Every, the, there, is, there is no programming in the program whatsoever that knows how to generate an echo. It doesn't know how. Kenny Glenn have never wrote that feature in. So if you're getting a double sound, not an echo, I've never heard an echo in Ecamm for as long as I live. I've always heard slap back or a double sound. Echo, 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 fade, 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 fade. It's out, 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 out. Get smaller, smaller, smaller as you go, go, go. That's echo. Anyway, um, it doesn't know how to do that. So there is a physical doubling of the sound from something that you are doing and how you have yourself set up. And if it were up to me, every copy of Loopback would be thrown into the trash because it complicates things for people who are trying to do something that maybe they don't know how to do and then they just blame us. So I'm just saying, if it were me, we would throw that in the trash, but I can't, I can't make people do it. So if you're going to do it, you're going to have to figure it out. And the nine times out of 10, I don't even use loop back. I don't remember the exact name of it, but I think you're going to have to turn off the monitor. Yeah, I think that's it. If you're getting doubling of sounds when you're using loop back, you need to make sure that your monitor is not on. That's it. How's it Coco? Good to see you. Actually, no. You know what's funny, K-Walk? Um, when, that wasn't an echo either. <laughs> that was doubling the sound again. Um, when I came back, I guess my Rodecaster 
upgraded to the newest firmware without telling me. And was well, I have it set up to do that. I was gone. There was a Roadcaster Pro update during the time I was gone. When I came back, I didn't know it. Once I rebooted the Roadcaster Pro, it was perfectly fine. So, yeah. All right. Anyway, be that as it may. Let's not look at these two dorks any longer. Ba -la -la -la. What else we got here? We have, well, now you've seen the sound levels window. Let's, let's pull that back up again, just so that we can make sure that we are getting everybody to understand this bad boy really, really well. Not, not sound effects, doc. Dang funny. Sound levels. Whenever, if your system is making a sound and you're not sure what it is, No, Katie. No, no. Don't blame me. <laughs> whenever, whenever. Hey, what's up, Josh? Whenever you're doing this, um, look at the level. And so, if your guest is saying something and you're hearing the guest twice, watch the sound level. You say nothing. Let the guest say something. And if the interview thing moves, and that's the only thing that moving, and you're hearing the guest twice, it's something on the guest end, right? If the inner thing is interview thing is moving and sound effects is also moving or system, sorry, system audio is also moving. That means that your mixer is probably making it happen twice. If the interview thing is moving and the sound interface one at the top here is moving, which you're watching right now, that also means that you're, you don't have mix minus turned on. So Whenever someone in the interview talks, the Roadcaster Pro should not move. If the interview person is talking and the Roadcaster Pro one is also moving, you don't have Mix Minus turned on. You, this thing tells you everything you need to know to trace where you're getting the double sound is, but what people do is they hear it and they panic. This is the equivalent of your oil light, your fuel light, your, your uh, tachometer, speedometer, like it's telling you, right? So... Uh, for instincts, if I, I don't know if this will work. This is a top to a... See, that's system. coming out of my Roadcaster Pro, right? Um, but in theory, if I had it set up to play system sound, then for me, actually, I didn't think about this. I could almost turn system audio completely off because my Roadcaster Pro will always play system audio. So I could mute this and still always be able to play sound from my, my drop squad. They, they come and hang out with me every week. You see what I'm saying? I can play sound from other sources. So most people, if your sound comes through your interface, whenever you play something on your computer, you do not need to have system audio installed. System audio is for people that say don't have a Rodecaster Pro or uh, what is that thing called? The Wave? Um, the Elgato version, the Wave. If you have a, a, a Rodecaster Pro or a Wave or something, you probably do not need to have system audio installed for anything whatsoever. In order to play something from another source, it will route through your device. If you have a USB microphone, like, um, what's Katie use? Katie uses one of these, right? If you have a USB microphone like this, you need system audio because it doesn't, have a way to route the audio from other programs through itself. So there you go. I hope that makes any sense. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you. Yeah. So that, that ought to help you. If again, if you think you're getting weird sounds or you're hearing double or whatever, just check here to see if you see two meters moving. If two meters are moving, you know that you have a problem in your setup, but the software itself doesn't know how to do that. Uh, uh, I was guessing for, and my end was double sign, and we could not figure out why. Um, <laughs> that person needs to come to the demo. <laughs> no, nine times out of ten, your sound as you are talking to them as an interview guest is also coming back through the browser tab. Possibly, you have more than one browser tab open. Like, um, don't listen. You should not listen to the stream through the same device that you're guesting on. So if you're calling in as a guest, this is good guest etiquette. 
if you're calling in as a guest on your computer, but you want to see the stream, use a phone or an iPad or something else to watch the stream and turn the volume all the way down, right? If you're, that way you make sure you don't have it playing on another tab and that tab is not muted and therefore that tab is causing a problem, right? So that's the best way. Nine times out of 10, it's a double tab open. It is almost always a double tab open. Or the other thing, the person just really didn't have mix minus turned on. And there's no way to do this without a good, without a good mix minus. If the person doesn't have a good mix minus, they just, yeah. The, the app does not know how to do what everybody accuses it of doing. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a system setup problem. And I have never been able not to solve it. Let's just put it that way. Audio flow. All right. So. Dun, 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 dun. Brain fart. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Going back to the other question about effects. All the effects are in this tab. There has, oh my God, I love this comment. I love this comment. I love this comment. There has been a guest checklist inside the support articles and inside the Facebook group for a year and a half. Let me get the link for you. It has been there forever. <laughs> it is I know this because I made it. And it has been there for well over a year and a half. The showrunner one has been there for over a year and a half. Stephanie made that one. But, yeah, I made the one that's in the Ecamm folder a year and a half ago. Oh, there's a moderator checklist. <laughs> oh, Paul, Paul got it. Anyway, yeah. There's there's been one for as for as probably a week after I got hired it's been there, so I know for a fact that we have the list. Um, Paul, do me a favor and put the link to the video hub in the chat. We are going to be recreating pretty much all the instructional videos again, but I can't think off the top of my head of a solution to a standard issue ecamp problem or just how to that doesn't exist in that video hub somehow people ain't finding it so we're going to we've made an issue to recreate all of this stuff all over again and sell it again it's kind of like your mom telling you to eat your spinach. We just got to keep telling you. But we, there's probably an answer to your question inside the video hub. There is hundreds of videos in there. I mean, like legit hundreds. On the channel itself, there's hundreds of videos. And there's 20,000 people in the Facebook group. And then there's Discord where I can see um, Gretchen and Paul right now. So every one of these questions can be easily answered in the right spot. Discord is probably your best bet because you can get a hands-on play around with like right away. Um, Ma, let me explain this again real quick before we go. If it was up to me, that button wouldn't exist, but it's not up to me. <laughs> you do not need to press echo cancellation. The only reason to ever need echo cancellation is you are trying to listen to the speakers on your computer or in your room at the same time you're trying to conduct an interview. You should never have the sound come out into the room where the microphone exists. Because, let's make this visual. Let's make this visual. I'll pick red. Here, red wire. Okay. So, if you take the sound out of your mouth and throw it into a microphone, and then it goes down into the system and come out of the speaker, what is the one thing in the room that's trying to listen to the same sound? 
you are creating a loop. If you let the sound go into this microphone and the only place for the sound to come out are these, you cannot get what you guys are calling echo. If I do this right here, then this is the problem that you have whenever you have speakers on in your room, the same place the microphone is. The microphone can pick up the speakers and give you a really obnoxious sound. So turn the speakers off, put in-ear monitors inside the brain, and never check the echo cancellation box for as long as you shall live. Now, people say, oh, well, I had a guest on my show, and the guest didn't have headphones. It's up to you. This is your call. This is your show. Echo cancellation, whether from us or Zoom or Crisp or whomever, crushes audio quality. Audio quality is the most primary thing in your whole entire setup. So... By using echo cancellation, you're crushing the quality of the audio because it has to take the signal and flip it and play it against itself to cancel it out. And it generates this weird digital swimming underground tinny kind of a little like reverberant sound. 15 to $20 in earbuds cancels that problem. Well, but my guest doesn't want to wear headphones. I just don't invite them on my show. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I refuse to have guests on my show that don't want to wear headphones. It sounds so bad. In the cases where I've been forced to do it because we're doing something with like a uh, a partner, a software partner, and they're not streamers, for instance, like um, when we were originally doing our streams with the Speedify crew, I just had to tell him, Alec, man, look, man, I love you. Your software is dope. Get some headphones, bro. Because <laughs> I can't. It just sounds so bad. It sounds so bad when you don't do that. And you already have to deal with if the internet gets slow and messes with the sound. So you want to put the best product into the stream. And then that way when YouTube or LinkedIn or whoever compresses it and do whatever they do, it doesn't come out as problematic. Make your guests wear headphones. It's simple as that. It's simple as that. All right. Oh, bro, you know, you ain't said nothing but a word. <laughs> you ain't said nothing. Yes, thank you, Serena. You remember, right, when I was in radio, that was the first thing. When people call because they want to win or they want to do their little shout-out, oh, I like to send uh, a special request out to uh, Gretchen and uh, watching it, I want to say her the Smokey Robinson tune. Like, you got to turn it down. Like, you can't hear yourself sending love letters to Gretchen on the radio because it sounded tragic. Everybody in here over the age of 40 has heard how horrible that sounds. That's exactly, thank you, Sarita, for reminding me. That is exactly what you're doing to your stream every time you let somebody try to come on with their notebook open and the speaker's talking into the microphone. And Apple's already trying to squish it. And then when we squish it further, and then maybe you got Zoom running, squishes it again, all of that squishing just crushes your audio. That is boom. Katie, you're not old enough to remember that. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Roy. And I like the avatar, Roy. Anyway, guys, let me run one more thing by you before we get out of here. Because I have to do affiliate training. Yes. All right, listen, let's jump over here and go into this uh, comments and reactions. This was an important one. Hey, switch, dang it. Ecamm Live, comments and reactions. There it is. So the reason why we are so, like, adamant about you guys throwing the cute colons and stuff, let me switch this in here real quick so you can see. All I have to do is come here, hit the cute colon, bam, I see all of the questions right there and make sure I got them all covered, right? The other thing that we can do in here is I can do, if I want to get back to something about audio, right? So Khalid asked about, um, you know, running the guest audio separately. I might want to reiterate that. I might want to go back to that. So this is the reason why we're so incessant about the Q colon. Here's another things you can do. I can come in here and start some random comments, right? And then when I click on favorites, 
I can see pause, comment. I can put it there when I'm done, turn off the bubble. I can say, what's up to Aubrey? Boom. And then I can put, you know, Josh up there. Thank you, Josh. Boom. And it's out of there, right? So the comments and reaction window, cool. Now, one last thing. Inside comments and reaction window on YouTube only so far, you can actually answer back, right? Bam. And then it will actually put it in there. And it thinks I'm Katie because Katie's here. It's not, it's just me. We're both logged into the same Ecamm. So that's comments and reaction in a nutshell. And then last but not least, this one is harder to see. So let's in, smash this little button here. Yo. Option key to just like marinate a window tighter. Seriously, one of my favorite things up in here. All right, so let me run through these real quick. This is my camera A, or I can select my can link. They're both the same. You got a green screen button here. If you're using such a thing, I don't really do that. I'm actually currently have it selected as camera A, so I gotta do that. But you got your green screen button. Blue screen might work a little bit because purple, right? Those are your fade levels. You can make it transparent, in which case you can see the background through. You can burn the background just a little bit, right? And then you can mask edges if you need to. Again, not something I play with. Zoom and pan, one of the dopest. Zoom this up, move this bad boy around. Really handy if you want to do a single camera, pretending it to be multiple cameras, you can use your zoom and pan. And then there's also your picture settings in here. If you want to embrighten something or transmogrify the color just a smidge, mess with the tint, right? Uh, mess with the saturation, right? Or the gamma, which is basically a type of contrast. And you can add LUTs. But remember, just like um, Jared's question, if you go in the settings, make sure you have the situation set on to apply camera effects to the recorded video sources if you want them to stay there. I probably would say leave it naked so that you can fix it in Final Cut or Premiere or DaVinci or whatever, make it a little bit cooler, but there's that. And then also down here on the bottom, let me scroll this down and then scroll this back up. You got the ability to mirror that camera, switch it to black and white, and then do a little seeps if you want it, or you can blur your camera, give you a little making up. Now, I'm gonna highly suggest you don't mess with none of those things, but you got rotate if you wish. Uh, really though, I say if possible, you wanna get your picture as tight as possible in your physical camera. So in this Sony ZV-E10, I got the white balance set, I got the exposure properly, 0.0. .0. I'm running at f2.6 right now, so I get a little slight blur. I could actually go down to 1.4 on this particular lens, but I don't go all the way down because it fudges the edges a little bit. And then I am doing at 30 frames a second, so I have the shutter speed at 1 over 60. If you're doing 24 frames a second, you want the shutter speed at 1 over 50. Almost nobody... I'm going to repeat this again. Almost nobody in the Ecamm community needs to be streaming at 60. Okay? That's for gamers. I don't know who told this lie, but 60 does not mean better picture quality. Most of the time, most of the streams you've ever seen me do are at 24p. And I've never had any complaints about the picture quality. Because I think people think that 60p means better picture quality. 60p just means better frame rate if you're doing high motion, like if you're Joe Satriani or somebody and your fingers do like this when you play guitar, maybe that helps out. But for a general standing here, hi, I'm Alex Johnson. Today I will show you how to use your Stream Deck. 60p is not helping you in any way, shape or form. As a matter of fact, it's harming you and it's running your bandwidth tighter than it has to be. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, you go ahead and drop in a feature request at support desk at ecamm.com and we'll see. Uh, that was a little, that would be a little complicated for the majority of our users, but yes. I'm 
I'm confused, but <laughs> okay, I'm duly noted. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? I don't know. Anyway, I gotta go do affiliate training people. We'll be back next Friday to have more fun. We're gonna do it all over again. We're gonna have it all over again. Um, yes, I ma, do not get mad at me, but every time someone sends a support article asking us how to adjust their camera on the Sony, you know exactly what I send back to them. The page from the Sony manual. <laughs> I know my support people get super mad at me, but they always ask me, hey, do you know how to turn off the, the you know, the, you know, all the stuff that comes on the camera in your little window? How do you turn it off? I send them the page to the article that says menu, HDMI output, turn off the display. Because you know where I learned it from? The manual. But yes, if you have problems with your settings, hit me up in the Discord. I'll try to help you. But all I've ever done different from anybody else is read the manual. There's nothing special. I get a brand new camera tomorrow, and I know how to use it that same night. Why? Because I read the manual. Gretchen, you read your Canon manuals? Yes, Gretchen read her Canon manuals, which must have been really painful. <laughs> Anyway, we're hanging in the Discord. I'm going to go jump off and do affiliate training. Every Wednesday, uh, Ma, here's a good invitation for you. Come through on Wednesday. Um, I was, this Wednesday, it was just uh, Rich and my brother June and myself. <laughs> but you're welcome to come through. Every Wednesday, we have office hours in the Discord. So all you got to do is pop over to the Discord every Wednesday. Check the Facebook group for the time. And you will come and see us hanging out in the Discord. You can ask all these crazy questions. And the cool part is your camera's already there because you're connected in the Discord. And then we can set you up and get you looking flousy. Man, I know all about Joe Satriani. That's my G. Anyway, love you guys. I'm going to put back my scene that I threw away. <laughs> what the heck did I do with it? Hold up. Wait a minute. I got to go do the demo. And he threw away the scene that he needs. Here it is. Hey, Doc, did you get my message? I sent you a message in the Discord. I'll reschedule that one. I forgot about the menu game. Oh, you scheduled something today? Man, I don't know why my calendar is not catching.